please note that this video contains spoilers. Mission Impossible 3 Movie Thoughts I guess I'll just start with... Well, let's, you know, just go over the thing or two from the party at the very beginning. It establishes the relationship, sort of, between, you know, Ethan and Julia and, you know, JJ's pal, I, his name escapes me at the moment, makes his obligatory appearance, you know, he just, he has to be in absolutely everything JJ does. He must have, like, some photos of him from, like, when they were children or something. There's, yeah. Ethan shows off his ability to read lips because <laughs> why not risk revealing that you're a secret agent and, you know, yeah, to, yeah. Anyway, that, you know, it obviously does serve the purpose of establishing that he can read lips and that, you know, and the name of the lake where they met or something like that. You know, both of which return later in the film. So, you know, it's not that that should have been cut, it's just that it should have been done in a different way, you know. I think they could have had the... You know, reference to the lake without having him read lips, and have him read lips at some other point, you know. So, Kerry Russell does kick a little bit of ass, you know, early on in the film with, yeah, in the overblown action scene. Where, you know, I'm starting to think that IMF is just, like, five people. Because they clearly don't have access to, like, teams of armed men, you know. Even when they have to, you know, shoot up a building that bad. They don't send in men with, men with guns. No, they just have computer, you know, remote-controlled machine guns set up outside the building, and Luther is supposed to take care of all of that, you know, and that, just, yeah. That, anyway, I have to talk about the explosive device in the head. One thing is that, you know, it's, when, when we actually see it, go. It's very disappointing, just the, the sound and the offhand, you know, effect. It's just not very compelling at all, you know, and I have to say, and, you know, my ex fiance and I talked about this when we watched it, and my girlfriend and I agree on this as well, her head should have blown up. I'm sorry, but this is a J.J. Abrams production, you know. Later in the film, we see some pretty twisted stuff. And just, okay, for, for anyone who's going to argue on this point, you know, five words. Alias, pop goes the weasel. Okay? Just, yeah. Discussion over. And they could have even done some interesting stuff with that. They could, or interesting, fun stuff with that, and very j -jerific. It could have had this sort of thing where she, you know... Lawrence Fishburne even brings it up. That explosive device could have actually downed your chopper. They didn't know that it was, you know, that that wasn't going to happen. Ethan risked it. You know, she risked it. What kind of agents are they, anyway? So, basically, you know, what we should have had was her jumping out of the chopper, or being thrown out of the chopper, just before her head blows up. So she just, just clears the chopper, and pfft, you know, that would have been awesome. That would have been so pure JJ. And that's something that people would have remembered. You know, and they could even have done it a couple of different ways. You know, they could have had, like, her state, and I, I, I'm not sure I can really take credit for this, because I think it might have actually been my ex-fiancé who you know, who suggested this. 
she could have been like, no, I, you know, I have to sacrifice myself to save you, and jumping out, and then, you know, then her head blows up. Or they could have been like, I'm sorry, we want to save you, but you're going to blow up, you have to leave, and tossing her out of the chopper, you know. And again, head blows up. That's how it should have been, you know. Either of those. The scene of Davian being picked back up, I guess with the support of IMF agents, because really, does he have access to that kind of thing? You know, it's, it's a drone, and you've got the, yeah, I'm thinking it's IMF or IMF's, you know, military contact or something like that. And again, if, if not, then, again, kind of disappointing that, you know, later on, that kind of hardware is not seen, you know. In that one scene, we have, you know, a jet, we have choppers, and then later, Davian is just pretty much by himself, you know, there, there are, what, five guards around where Lindsay, Lindsay, Julia actually is, you know, yeah, that... And, you know, other than that, the scene of Davian being rescued by, you know, his people or the IMF mole and whatever, it actually kind of renders the last half hour that they spent capturing him completely pointless because nothing was accomplished. You know, they don't get anything out of it other than the coordinates for, you know, the rabbit's foot and then later Ethan steals it and he wouldn't steal it if it wasn't for having captured Davian and for Davian escaping, you know. So, yeah, that whole thing. And I guess that was part of, you know, Billy Crudup's plan. He, you know, he sat down and thought, okay, so if we capture Lindsay, Ethan's going to want to rescue her. And if we kill her, he's going to want to capture Davian. And if he gets Davian, and we take Davian from him, he's going to want to get the rabbit's foot so that he can save Julia. And I guess that's it. Because he couldn't just have someone, you know, directly go to the rabbit's foot without having to, you know, get Davian back and uh, that whole thing. Yeah. And, you know, he has to, you know, he, he has to blow his cover going directly to, you know, Ethan and be like, you know, what was in Lindsay's message? Now, I'm going to give away, I'm the actual mole, did Lindsay know? You know, it's, yeah, that just... And, you know, then we have the fact that the film is, in part, a, an essential remake of the first film. You know, the first movie has a reason to exist. Thus far, the sequels do not. I haven't watched the fourth one yet. Tomorrow night will be the night. Basically, you know, the first film we have, it's, you know, it's an adaptation of the original TV series, and basically what they're doing is, instead of just having him go on a mission, they have a mission be, you know, botched, and he is disavowed, and he has to spend the rest of the movie trying to prove his innocence and get away from, you know, his own company. That's a pretty interesting concept. The second one, it's just a straightforward, you know, action thriller complete with a generic bad guy who just wants to kill people and make money because those are bad things in Hollywood. <sighs> yeah, so, you know, at least in the second one he wasn't disavowed. In this one he is disavowed again. And they do very little to, you know, actually distinguish this from the first movie. I guess the difference is that he now has a wife and that it's the wife that's threatened instead of his family in the first movie. Yeah, there's there's really not much 
of an actual difference, you know, and then we have, well, I guess, you know, at least it's not, you know, his mentor being the mole in this one, and yeah, but it being his mentor in the first movie was actually also kind of interesting, and we had this kind of thing of spy against spy. You know, the second movie supposedly has spy against spy, but I call BS on the bad guy being a spy, because he never does anything spy-ish, well, almost never, and he certainly is way too frickin' stupid to be a spy. Yeah, in this one, the bad guy spy just doesn't actually do anything. He just uses his, you know, connections and pull to, you know, do some things, but there's no real, you know, one spy tricking the other spy, and yeah. Again, we're left with just, you know, we're supposed to care because, you know, we want Julia and Ethan to be together, and we don't really care that much. The Rabbit's Foot. Again, after this movie came out, you know, gradually people did become more and more used to J.J. not being able to wrap anything up in his stories, and just having these anticlimactic, disappointing, answerless endings. And with this one, it's just... I mean, one thing is that there is no actual answer. At least in the shows he did, we might just appreciate what we, you know, just the experience, you know, the, the journey and the destination, you know, all that jazz. But this, are we really supposed to care? I mean, again, the emotional core is just not that compelling. You know, we don't really care based on the emotional attachment. So, you know, we have the action, which I'll get to in a little bit. But at the end, what was accomplished by this movie? Davian ends up dead, and the mole that we didn't even know was there is, you know, killed. And that's it. You know, there's there's no big... By the end of the first movie, you feel like something was accomplished. By the end of the second movie, you feel like something was accomplished. By the end of this movie... <sighs> Problem is that Crudup kind of had a point. I'm not saying that it's a good thing to work with the bad guys, but when he says Davian is just the weed and, you know, when you kill him and there just be two more, isn't he kind of right? I mean, are we supposed to disagree with that idea? I, it's not a bad thing to have your villain spout something that you can actually uh, kind of agree with. You know, it's interesting when there's that kind of conflict. But the film doesn't address this. You know, Ethan doesn't think of a good way to go about it. You know, he still just goes ahead and kills Davian. We don't find the buyer. Okay, so they get the rabbit's foot, but they could have done that without quite that trouble, you know, it, again, very little is accomplished by the end of the movie, you know, they, if they just wanted him dead and to get the rabbit's foot, they could have killed him on the plane, you know, they had the coordinates for the rabbit's foot in the suitcase, they could have killed him, stolen the rabbit's foot, end of movie, you know, that could have been it, but no, instead we have to have this... And I guess the IMF has gotten even stupider, because this time they didn't even know about the mole. Yeah, and again, that was a kind of interesting thing in the first movie. You know, when you were first told there is an actual mole, it just... You didn't see that coming. I mean, it's early on in the movie, but still, it it's a complete surprise. And in this movie, when you find out there's a mole, it just... It isn't that compelling. It's a kind of interesting, you know, switch around with, you know you think it's going to be Lawrence Fishburne, and then it turns out to be Crudup instead, but that's it. And again, Crudup does nothing. You know, he doesn't do anything spy-ish. He also, he gets himself killed in a really stupid manner, you know. If he was really a spot, 
excuse me, wouldn't he approach the, excuse me, the, you know, where they're keeping Julia in a more careful manner? You know, basically in that last scene he serves to get himself shot and deliver the rabbit's foot back to the good guys. That's it, you know. The action. First of all, there are some good action scenes. The very first action scene for how loud and obnoxious it is, is actually kind of fun. I will give that, give them that. And, you know, Davian's rescue, it's also not bad. You know, I wish that, you know, I'm not that crazy about how it was filmed, but, you know, it, it was okay. And the, I don't know, choreography, the setup of the situation is pretty good. Although I do wish that Davian wasn't quite as, you know, okay, so he's not worried about being shot by Ethan, and, you know, that's why he's sitting like that in the shopper. Wait, why isn't he worried? That, that really makes no sense. How could he know that Ethan was going to run out of bullets? What if Ethan had had an additional clip? You know, it just... Yeah, there's... But anyway, after that... Just briefly, just so I don't forget, yet again, they feel the need to reenact the, you know, crews being suspended above the ground. And it's, again, just, it's not quite as bad as the second one, because the second one just botched it on several level, levels. This one, at least, it's just a kind of clever little nod, but it's still just not necessary, you know. And, uh, you know, again, it has nothing resembling the tension of that scene in the first movie, which is not to say that the movie doesn't have plenty of tension. But they also, again, with the masks, you know, at least in this one there are only two. The, f the second movie went crazy with the masks. I... I would have thought that they would stop after that. This one does, you know, hold back some, but... Still, you know, and again, we have the, this kind of disappointment, anticlimax kind of thing. We're expecting Julia to die, and then it turns out to just be a full setup, you know. It's just this scene that we've been anticipating for the entire movie for, I think, at least 90 minutes, turns out to just be, you know, a tra it might as well be a dream sequence. Come on. It's just, yeah. One thing that I do kind of like is that Ethan goes very spy right after in order to find Julia, and that was really good. You know, he doesn't bust heads, he doesn't blow stuff up, he doesn't shoot people. He calls Benji, and, you know, right after he actually, you know, that, you know, he, through the spy technology and all of that, you know, he gets his way to Julia. That was really clever. And by the way, Benji is, you know, so obviously not Marshall from Alias, because... Okay, he's, he's eccentric, he's the gadget guy. He's British. That is what separates him completely from Marshall. You know, played by Simon Pegg, of course, because, you know, Americans like Shaun of the Dead, too. But yeah, so, you know, the masks, and, and we have that, that machine that can apparently craft a mask perfectly within, what, one minute with believable skin? I, I'm sorry, I do not buy it. I return it with an angry glare. That is, that is just complete BS. That, it really strains credulity. And this film is actually not that bad with the gadgets. Overall, you know, the there are plenty of them, but at the end of the day, it, you know, I, I like how they approach the gadgets, at the very least. You know, pretty much every single time, it's, you're sitting there going, wait, what's that? And then a second later, you get, oh, that's what that's supposed to do, you know. Ethan points a little, 
thingamabob towards the ground from high up. We have no idea what he's doing. He looks at it and it tells them, you know, how, you know, how tall a drop it is, or however you say that. And we're like, ah, it measured that. You know, he throws something through the air and it, you know, latches on to the gas canister and we see a red, you know, blinking on it. And immediately we realize, ah, it was a magnetic bomb. You know, it just... Instead of having this extended cue sequence where Bond is told, well, this does that, and this does that, and then later you see them use it, you just have this stuff where they use something and then pretty much immediately you realize what it's for. You know, that's also something that J.J., I don't know, I'm not sure if he, it's something we're really... We've seen from him a lot before, I couldn't say that j just at this moment, but it's certainly something that does, that he does really well in this movie. Anyway, the action... Once they get to China, and, you know, he goes onto the building, you know, the first, the, the swinging over there, that works, you know, but then he just goes into a building we have no idea what he does in there, and the next thing we see is just him getting back out of the building, and he's being chased. And that's it. We have no idea how he found the rabbit's foot, how he knew it was that, what, he reads Chinese, I guess, and, you know, just this whole thing. I'm, I'm sorry, but it might have been interesting to see this, you know, action scene, or, you know, covert operations kind of scene, since this is... In fact, a spy action flick. And, you know, he, they get away and he has to call. The, the driving is actually decent enough. The final fight between him and Davian is, again, just such an anti-climax. You know, we have this... One thing is that basically this villain is just entirely defined by that we're... We hate him because he's... Or we're supposed to hate him because he kills the women that Ethan likes, you know. And, you know... And we actually care about one of those. The other one being Julia. And... That's, that's just kind of it, you know. He's not established as being this great fighter. Again... First movie, second movie, the bad guy can do stuff, you know, he's he's actually a skilled... Well, in the first one, it's a spy, I don't know what the heck the guy in the second one was. And we have, you know, actual... You know, in the first one, it's not so much a direct fight as a sort of... You know, it's, it's a struggle, and it's, you know, it's intense, but it's not really supposed to be a fight. The first one really isn't an action movie. The second one, we have a fight, and it's pretty good. This one, they beat each other up a little bit, and then Davian gets run over by a car, and that's it. You know, that just, yeah. And then, after that... Julia is not only told all this top secret information about who he really is, she's let right into the IMF for some reason. Yeah, I, I don't know, I, I think that, you know, if I happened to be the director of the IMF and a mole had just been discovered there, I don't think my first instinct would be to let a civilian in, but... Maybe that's just me. I've reviewed other parts of this series. The links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.